Hello, my name is Shahyar Shahyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is the Sterling numbers of the first kind. So let's get started. And I will tell you what these Sterling numbers of the first kind or first type are. N and K are non-negative integers. A Sterling number of the first kind is denoted by two brackets NK. We need that N brack K. Um, and what it is, is the number of ways of seating N people around K identical non-empty circular tables. So you have N people, you want them to sit around um, table, uh, circular tables, but you have K of them. How many ways can you do that? Now, um, in sitting around a circle table, the actual seats don't matter. Only the relative position of where you're sitting matters, like who's to your left, who's to your right, who's across the, um, the, the across from you and so forth, but not um, not you know which specific seats you're 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 si sitting at. Um, alternatively, again, this n brack k is the number. And this is this 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 will be uh, this is sort of the formal definition of it is the number of permutations of one true n that can be written as a product of k disjoint cycles. So if you were a group theorist, this is the way you would think about it. Um, how many permutations of n? How many elements of the group S n, the symmetric group on n letters? Uh, can you, are written as a product of k disjoint cycles. Um, when we say k disjoint cycles, we include uh, one cycles as well. So um, note that zero brack zero is one. You could you could have that as a definition, or you could say that well that follows from uh, from from our original definition. If you have zero people, could you seat all of the people that you have around zero tables? And the answer is yes. I'm already done. And then the next question is that if I do it and you do it. Will you do it in different ways? No, we both will do the same way, which is doing nothing. And so there's only one way to do it. Um, um, also, um, a notation that we will not use in this lecture at all, but but we will use later, is what if we add a plus or minus to this n brack case, depending on whether or not n plus k is odd or even. And when you do that, you call that a signed uh, Sterling number of the first kind. And I denote them by f, little s of n k. Some people. Um, use different notation. They actually use little s n k to denote the Sterling numbers of the first kind. But but I use the little s n k for the signed Sterling numbers of the first type and brack n k for um, n brack k for the actual Sterling numbers of the first kind. And again, that's the number of ways of sitting n people around n distinct people. People are always distinct around k identical non-empty circular tables. So. What if you have four people and no tables where you can't do it? That means that four brack zero is zero. Uh, what about you if you have one table? Well, if you have four people and sitting around one table, that's just the number of circular permutations. That was actually subject of a previous video. And the answer is always n minus one, where n is the number of people factorial. So in this case, it's three factorial. And then the reasoning is not that difficult. You can just sit one person uh, down. It doesn't matter who. Um, just, just pick one person and, and sit them down. And, and then after that, you have the rest of the n minus one people and you need the permu any permutation of them. Um, it doesn't matter who you put it right at the beginning because it's circular. And so um, the, no matter how you seat people, uh, you can just turn them around and, and anyone you like could be at that head, that head, head position. Uh, what about four brack two? So you have four people sitting around two tables. Well, there you either have to have three people sit at one table, one person sit alone, or two people at one table, two people at another table. If you have three and one, first you have to decide who is the, the, the lonely guy. And, and there's four ways of doing that. And then the three people sitting at the, um, at, the, at the table together, there's two ways to organize them, two factorial. So that's four times two. This is the, the eight is the number of ways of uh, putting the uh, four people around two tables. If you have three people at one table, one people at another. But then what about if you uh, split them into two parts? First, you have to choose which two go together. That's four choose two parts. But but um, that's six ways of picking two. But but if you pick this two versus the complement, you get the same thing. So you're over counting, so the double counting. So you have to divide by two. Or another way of thinking about it is that um, you ask your favorite person who you want to sit with. And they have uh, three choices. And then that's it. As soon as you they pick... They, who they're going to sit with, um, the other two have to sit together. And when two people sit at a red circle table, there's just only one way to sit. So there's just three. Three plus eight is 11. This shows that these numbers are actually not that easy to um, come up with. So even for four, brack two, we had to do some uh, 
uh, some counting. So uh, if n is greater or equal to one, then n uh, brac zero is zero, as, as we have discussed, n brac one is, your, is the circular permutation subject of a previous video, n minus one factorial. Um, so, so those are some of the ones we know. What about n brac n minus one? So if n people, and they're gonna sit around n minus one uh, circular tables, and again, none of the tables empty. Well, if you have n people and n that many tables, then all that means is that everyone pretty much is going to sit alone except for one couple. So all you have to do is decide who those two are, and, and you can do that and choose two. Just pick two people to sit together. Everybody else sits alone. And if k is greater than n, if the number of tables uh, is more than the number of people you've got, then you can't do it because some tables will go empty, and that's so the number is going to be zero. So these are just some uh, some 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 ones that we can write down. Based on those, you can have um, a table for the small values. But already, um, um, n brac two is not an obvious uh, um, an obvious formula. Uh, so 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 this diagonal here is all ones. That's n brac n. The the diagonal right below that n brac n minus one are the triangular numbers and choose two. Um, and, and these uh, column, the first column, the, the, the zeroth column just has a one and zeros everywhere else. But the first column, uh, these are factorials, uh, just off by one. So on row five, we have four factorial and row six, we have five factorial and so on. Okay, but how do we find the rest of them? Just like many other kinds of uh, numbers that we have, what we do is we come up with a recurrence relation. So. So I, I'm, I'm going to say that n and k positive integers, and I want to give you a recurrence relation for n brac k, a way of finding n brac k if you know the smaller ones. But let's just prove it, um, and then we write down the answer. Um, in fact, you might want to stop the video, try to come up with a, um, a recurrence relation yourself. Um, but, but, but here's how, how I'm going to do it. So the thought experiment is going to be that we have n people, we want to sit, sit around uh, at, at k round tables, and we want none of the tables to be empty, um, and and we want to know how many ways we can do that. Now, imagine that, uh, and with no empty tables, that Javad is one of the people, and he arrives late. So Javad comes late. So what are the choices? Either there's an empty table when he arrives, everybody else is sitting down. Um, I, I mean, there are k tables, and everyone is sitting. If there is a table, one empty table, there can't be two empty tables. Because if there are two empty tables, Jowett can't sit at both of them. So one way or the other, one of the tables will be empty and we will not get uh, uh, to a configuration that we wanted to count. We wanted to count the ones where there's no empty table. But when Jowett comes, it's possible that one of the tables is empty. If that's the case, Jowett has, has got to go sit at that table alone. Or it might be that not. All the K tables, there's got someone in, in the, on the, at them. And so Jowett has got to join one of the tables. So those are the two possibilities. So, so either Javad is sitting alone or not. Now, um, so if Javad is alone, well, Javad is going to, I mean, if there's one empty table, Javad is going to sit at that. But how many other ways could have be uh, made that so that everybody else is sitting and there's one empty table? Well, we had N minus one people and K minus one tables, and we wanted to seat them at those N minus K minus one tables with no table going empty. I don't know the answer to that, but I can write it in terms of uh, Sterling numbers of uh, the first type. It's n minus one brac k minus one. So that's the number of ways that I can um, put n people around k tables with Javad sitting alone. But what if Javad is not alone? Well, if that that means that when Javad came, and all the k tables are taken, someone is sitting at the, at them. So uh, first of all, how could we do that? How we could set n people? around k table, n minus one people. Javad is still not there. And the answer is n minus one brack k. But now Javad comes, what is he going to do? Well, our instruction to Javad is going to be, is, is go to right, go sit to the right of blah. And, and blah could be anyone. So, any, and, and that's a very good instruction. So if you say, go sit the next, uh, next uh, to the right of that person, then Javad knows exactly where to go sit. And any, if you choose a different person, then, um, that will be a different place, that a, a different configuration. So the number of play, ways to place Javad is exactly the same as the number of people who are already sitting because we're going to tell Javad to go to sit to the right of one of them. So there's n minus one choices for that. So the total number of ways of sitting, uh, Java, seating Javad 
if he's not alone, is n minus one times um, n minus one brack k. And the sum of these must be the total number of ways of uh, sitting n people um, around k tables, um, k non-empty tables. And so we have this uh, uh, recurrence relation. Using this recurrence relation, we can of course fill our table up. And, and, and this table also has, like all the other tables like this in combinatorics, many properties. For example, one of the properties is that every row is unimodal. The numbers go up and then come down. And again, not all of these numbers are that obvious why they are what they are. I, I explained some of them. I want to just finish by explaining that the second diagonal down, so these numbers 2, 11, 35, 85, 175, 332, what are those? Um, and so those make sense only after n is greater or equal to three. Um, and so let's let's think about that. So that's n brack n minus two. N brack n, those are the main diagonal. N brack n minus one, that's the, the off diagonal, one diagonal down. N brack n minus two is one even down. So, um, and you have to have at least three people for that to not be zero. So um, you have at least three people. And the question is that, can we find a formula for n brack n minus two? And this might give us an idea that um, this is not going to be that easy to come to come up with a general formula for n brack k. Um, so what's the question? How many ways can you see n people be seated at n minus two non-empty identical circle tables? That's what, what we want to do. Um, or uh, how many elements of Sn uh, can be written as, um, as a product of n minus two uh, disjoint cycles. Okay, if you're gonna sit n people at n minus two tables, you've got a lot of tables. And so at least one person has to sit at e e one of those tables, that leaves only two people. So there's really only two choices, two options you have. You could have those two people just joined together at one table. And then the way it would look is that you would have a table with three people and then n minus three tables. Remember you have n minus two total tables of, of just one person sitting at them. Or you would split those two people, um, those final two people up, and you would have two tables with two each, and then n minus four tables with one each. Now, we, each one of these we can count separately. So in the first option, um, what do you have to do? Well, uh, all you have to do is pick which three people are going to sit together. Everybody else just gets to sit at one table. All the tables are identical, so it doesn't really matter where they sit. So um, that's n choose three ways to pick the three people. But then after you pick them, you have to decide how they're going to sit. And three people sitting around one, one table, that's two factorial. That's two, way, two factorial or two ways of doing it. So for the first option, you have two times n choose three ways. But what about the second option? The second option is that you've got two people and two people. Well, first you pick the four people that are going to be in that 2-2 two, two configuration. Then you have to decide how to split them into two groups. Because as soon as you split them into two groups, then um, um, does, like at that one table, they, then there's no more, no more choice. They just sit at that table. It doesn't matter how they say this is a circular table for two people, there's only one way. And how do you uh, split four people into two teams? Well, you pick your favorite person among the four people and you tell them, pick a teammate. And that person will say, well, I have three choices. As soon as that person makes a choice, you're done. You have split the, 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 the group into two. So there's only three choices and, and that's three choose and, um, and choose four. You could also say it's four choose two because you pick two out of the four, that's six ways, but that's double counting because you could pick these two or the complement, the other two, and you would get the same configuration. So you have to take four choose two and divide it by two and you get six. Okay, so, so this is it. And so um, n brack n minus two is two choose n, uh, uh, two times n choose three plus three times n choose four. Um, and those are the numbers that you get on the second diagonal uh, down. Um, this is the end of this video. Keep hydrated. And if you want to be subjected to more videos like this, then like and subscribe this video so that it will show on your stream. Till the next lecture.